Greetings and a happy, healthy Sunday to you all. So this has been a really busy week. We launched our MetabolicDuo.com platform and we got a load of people came in and subscribed in the first couple of weeks, which was fantastic. And we ran our first Zoom meeting last Thursday. So we picked a presentation from Gabor on heart disease risk factors and which of them do or do not link to inflammation, insulin resistance and immune system components. So it was a great session, went down really well the recordings are available for the subscribers and the q a sessions afterwards also super interaction and i'm going to show you a few clips and there might be a few tips in there so the first one is myself kicking off and a snippet around gender in heart disease and i touch on the hormonal factors and iron loading factors and i also get on then to inflammaging uh, so have a quick look the one that everyone probably has heard of is all women are hormonally different. But remember, they did estrogen and all those kind of supplementations and hormonal therapies. And a couple of those studies backfired and the women actually had worse outcomes. So there's question marks around the hormonal, though it's got a lot of support broadly. And another one I just mentioned without going into detail, though I think we will later, uh, iron loading. So women have the menstrual cycle. And it's a little known but very interesting thing that that low iron status that women tend to have relative to men and after menopause, when that stops, their risk goes up over 10 years to match men by the age of 60. They're as bad for heart disease. Well, the iron hypothesis is interesting too. So we won't delve here. Age and atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Many studies on this, and Gabor's been through so many, and, and myself too, but inflammaging. So just a short snippet there to give you a feel for our format. And I'll now show another short clip with some insights on perionditis and also hypertension and particulates in coronary vascular disease. So perionditis through immune activation can accelerate arterial degradation. Now in fairness, periodontitis also can cause bacterial ingress into your blood system those bacteria can set up little camps, believe it or not, like tuberculosis. They can protect themselves with a microbial slime and they can drive arterial inflammation also. So multiple mechanisms. And I think the key thing here, again, not to be tough on the medical system, but if you go into specialists, one of the biggest drivers of blood pressure, bar none, is salt retention by the kidneys due to insulin resistance. That's a huge driver of idiopathic or essential hypertension, massive one, but that won't get mentioned. Uh, almost certainly won't get mentioned. And periodontitis certainly won't get mentioned by someone generally treating blood pressure. These things are in the scientific literature, but you're not really at the leading edge or, or the front facing system. Mainly it's pharmaceuticals and that's just the way it is. So smoking pollution, this one you may or may not have heard of, but it's a pretty big one. The mechanism, the particulates that go in the lung, and you can see in the top left here, when the particulates go in the lung and they're captured by macrophage and you've got some goo down there and you've seen the autopsies of lungs from people who smoke and are exposed to other things, that gunk gets passed up a kind of elevator up into the throat and the mucus essentially clearing out all that kind of bad, bad material, ends up getting ingested down into your gut. And there it can cause dysbiosis. And the microbiome disruptions are a huge driver in themselves. We'll now move on to my intro to Gabor, the metabolic warrior himself. And uh, as you'll see, I make the note that the audience should take notes during these presentations twice a month. And then at the end, for the Inner Circle members, we have a live Q&A interactive uh, so we can go through the questions relating to the content in each meeting. And the Q&A session for this one, our first one, was excellent. And we're going to be continually improving all the time based on audience feedback. That's really important to us. So the topics, the level of depth we go into or not, and the questions that arise all need to be woven into our strategy going forward to make MetabolicDuo.com the best health and science platform out there. So here we go. So now... 
this fella is going to come in, the Adipocyte Jedi, and go through the rest of the slides. I let you go, Gabor. And again, hopefully, if people have a pencil and can make a note of questions like they'd like to ask, we'll move at a fair pace. We can change that pace in future meetings, depending on feedback. So now I show a brief uh, excerpt from Gabor's presentation, and he goes through LP little a, the new bad cholesterol, and ApoB, the kind of new bad cholesterol, because we know LDL is kind of fading into the background now after many decades, but he shows a really fascinating study of LPA and how it is seen in the atherosclerotic plaque versus ApoB, which is, you know, a really popular uh, target to treat, if you will. But ApoB may not show up quite as much. And he also mentions some uh, very interesting stuff around LDL, whether it goes down or goes up with inflammatory forces. So just an expert. Here you go. Very interesting uh, localization of ApoB and Apo literally. They actually took out during uh, operations, vascular procedures, some samples and uh, had a look at what happens. Is there if there is a relationship between particles in the plasma and particles in the, in the atherosclerotic uh, lesions? And what they found was that uh, there is a very strong correlation between what you find in the plasma. So the higher the apo literally, the higher in the plasma, the higher it gets in the atherosclerotic lesions. And that's, in fact, is very closely related to the, to the hypothesis by, by Pauling and Rath that it might have something to do with wound healing. You have these small injuries in, in the arteries and there are much many more injuries in, in the, the arteries due to the higher blood pressure than in, in veins. And what you see on the right hand side of, of the graphs, there is uh, no real correlation between ApoB in the plasma and in the atherosclerotic lesions. It's, it's quite intriguing because if ApoB is a major uh, causal factor in atherosclerosis and it just enters the uh, arterial wall, according to this uh, bullet type of uh, hypothesis, you would see largely proportional amounts of particles in the arterial wall, what you find in the plasma. But there is barely anything to see here. That's that's very interesting. We can move to the uh, next slide. Just uh, talk about what happens to, to ApoB when you have this acute Im immune activation, which is called the APR. Normally, what I mentioned, uh, LDL goes down uh, as it sequesters in, in infections, for example, or acute inflammation, it sequesters foreign particles, uh, pathogens, then it gradually or very quickly decreases. But what happens in certain types of inflammations when the in inflammation is not yet systemic, but there is a well-defined source of inflammation, Indeed. And believe me, that's the tip of the cholesterol and health iceberg, uh, which we'll be going through over time in great detail and always extracting, you know, the simple solutions and the things you can take action on from the heavier science, which we'll be always attempting to simplify. So I'm going to finish with Gabor's summary. And he went through a full slide of points of learnings for people to take away. But I'm just going to show the second slide where he's wrapping it up. And very interesting insights even in that. Hyperinsulinemia always comes with uh, chronic inflammation and chronic inflammation always causes uh, hyperinsulinemia. This ki uh, kind of a uh, vicious uh, cycle. Uh, just an interesting comment that natural light UV exposure has uh, several benefits and beyond uh, vitamin D and uh, nitric oxide synthesis, one is the, the immune modulation, which was shown that it stimulates regulatory immune cells, which uh, take care of these uh, hyperinflammatory responses, what we often have as a, as a reaction to the modern environment. So there you have it, folks. Metabolicduo.com, the best science understanding and health platform out there. And our first meeting actually reassured me that we're doing exactly the right thing. We're keeping the price really low, makes it kind of semi-viable for us, to be honest, but we want to reach as far as possible out there into the population and help people as much as possible with understanding the science, the papers, the studies behind the best health advice for productivity, weight loss, 
personal improvement generally and just a better life. So that's it, metabolicduo.com. The details are down below. And please do consider signing up. And as I say, the higher level inner circle members get the live Q&A twice a month and all the recordings are supplied afterwards, the list of references, and we're going to be working on getting transcripts out too. So we want to make this the kind of central resource that is the best value, uh, beats everyone on value, and certainly beats everyone on scientific interpretation and useful advice to take away. So there you are, guys. Thanks so much for listening.